Hi, I'm Frank with Rick Motec. And in this video, we're gonna cover how to install our LC27 load cell kit onto the Logitech G27 or G25 pedal set. And stay tuned at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some additional tips and tricks that are not on the website and are not in the product instructions. So let's take a look at the tools that we're gonna to need to complete the installation. We'll need a couple of Phillips screwdrivers, a number one and a number two Phillips. We'll need a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench or hex wrench, needle nose pliers, a pair of snips, a 3 16 drill bit, a ruler, a drill, and a cardboard box about 10 inches square, maybe 12 inches square, about uh, 280 millimeters to 300 millimeters square. Optionally, it's great to have a magnet, a small dish, and a pointed tool to be able to make marks with into the plastic. Okay, so first step we're gonna do is remove the pedal face off the brake pedal. We only need to do the brake pedal because that's the only one that we're gonna modify at this point. So now that we've got the pedal face off, we're gonna bring in the box and turn the pedals upside down into the box. We're gonna begin by removing the 12, I'm sorry, the 14 silver screws that are on the back cover here. Don't forget, there are two screws underneath the carpet gripper. Next, using the number two Phillips screwdriver, we're gonna remove the 12 black screws that are on the back cover. So now that all the screws have been removed, we can just grab the edge of this cover and lift it out of the way. Next, we can lift out the brake pedal, lay it on its side until we disconnect the wires. We're gonna first remove the screw holding the ground. Get that out of the way. Then, using the needle nose pliers, Action. we're gonna use that to gently remove each wire off the potentiometer. Now we're gonna remove the pedal from the plastic housing, set the plastic housing aside, so we can complete the work we need to do on the pedal. Remove the screws that secure the spring housing to the pedal arm. Tilt the spring housing out, remove the spring, and slide out the brass ferrule and set it aside. Now we need to drill a hole in the top housing. You'll notice that there's a seam in the molding that runs along the side of the red housing. We're gonna mark up from the bottom one inch or 25 millimeters, and we're gonna make a mark with a pointed tool. Using a 3 16 drill bit, drill a hole on the mark you just made. So now we're going to take the load cell, we're going to uncoil the wire, and we're going to start by feeding the wire through the hole from the inside out, like this. Thread the wire through, and the load cell is now going to go in with the small nib facing in, 
fold down the wire and hold it down with your finger while at the same time pulling the wire through and gently walk it into place. When it's in place, the wire comes directly out the hole and you can actually wiggle the wire around and watch the load cell wiggle side to side. Okay. So now it's time to put this all back together. Take the spring with the rubber bushing. You'll notice the rubber bushing has three notches in it. Those need to align with the three spokes that are inside the bottom of the bottom housing. Find the orientation, collapse it, make sure that everything engages properly and leave it in that position. Take the brass ferrule, insert it back into the pivot on the top housing and with the wire exiting upwards, put it all back together. Then carefully collapse the whole thing and get it back into its position. So now we're gonna put the screws back on. So take a screw, put it on the end of the Allen wrench, have it ready. Move the piston so that the hole lines up and insert the screw. Then we put the screw on the other side. So now we're going to take the wire and route it so that it stays out of the way of moving parts. And we're going to bring it underneath the housing this way and bring it out the back. And we're going to use a tie wrap to secure the wire to the lower red housing. And use the needle nose pliers to snug it up and then use the snips to trim it. So now we're ready to put the brake pedal assembly back into the housing. Start by laying the pedal down on its side, just as we did when we were removing it, so that we can attach the black ground wire. We're gonna take the screw, put it through the lug, start it, and using the screwdriver, snug that down. Once that's in, we can drop the pedal down so now we're going to take the wire that comes off the load cell. We're going to take the three, the black, the yellow, and the red, and insert them into the spring terminal. So easiest way is to get each one into its respective slot. You can push down on the retainer, get them all in, and they will all be firmly attached. Give each one a tug to make sure that it held tightly. Now we're going to take the pedal connectors and attach them to the circuit board on the right hand side here. They're labeled black, white, and red. So insert the black onto the black marked, the white onto that. And finally the red. Now we're going to find a location to mount this inside at the plastic housing. Once we do, peel off the backing and press it into place. Finally, we're gonna take this excess wire and we're gonna bundle it up. We're gonna use one of our tie wraps to secure it. And just to finish everything off, we're going to take this bundle that we just made and we're going to tie wrap it to one of the existing wires just so it's not floating around. You want to make sure before we put the cover on that the, 
all the wires are secured into these clips. This keeps the wire out of the way from any moving parts, so you don't have any problems in the future. You also want to make sure that the wire that exits out and goes to your wheel uh, is threaded through these posts, like shown here. Now that all the wiring's back in place, it's time to put the cover back on. Cover should just drop right in place and it should not feel like anything is being squeezed down or anything. It should fall in gently, evenly, all the way around. Once it's in, it's time to put all the screws back on, the 14 silver screws and the 12 black screws, right back where they came from. So now that the bottom end has been buttoned up, all we have left to do is put the brake pedal face back on, put the two screws back in, and tighten them down. Once the mod is complete, pedal travel will be significantly reduced from what it used to be. It now travels about three quarters of an inch under full load, requires 70 pounds of force to fully brake. And when it's under full braking, the pedal will come down to about the same level as the throttle pedal. This will facilitate heel toe. It makes the pedal easier to reach and it will give you much better control when you're driving the sim car. So here's a quick tip. Now that you've installed the load cell kit, you're left with the brake spring. You can make the entire pedal set feel a lot firmer and a lot beefier if you take the brake spring and substitute it into the clutch and then take the clutch spring and substitute that into the throttle and get rid of this very light throttle pedal. Make the entire pedal set a lot beefier, a lot more robust. You'll get a better driving experience out of it. And here's another tip. Once you install the load cell, the potentiometer in the brake is no longer used. You can use it as a spare. If the potentiometer in your throttle or your clutch fails, you can easily swap that in and fix your pedals. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and come by our website at www.rickmotech.com. Thanks for watching.